today's world of always available limitless information would have us believe that oftentimes things are exactly as they seem. That we can rely on our own experiences and perception to deduct what is real and what is wrong. Past Possibility. Real or Dawn. Hosted by James and Flakes. We'll live in a world where reality and fantasy live side by side. Where illusions disguise themselves as substance, and real magic is a thing that exists. Can you separate what's real from what isn't? To do so, you must break through the web of your misconceptions about what's real, and open your mind to things past possibility. This drawing has been taken into account time and time again as an example of optical illusions. To some, it resembles a duck, its beak slightly open, almost appearing to be smiling at us. However, when we shift our perspective, suddenly a hair becomes visible. And what we thought to be the beak turns into raised ears. What does this picture teach us? Well, it teaches us not to look at things only one way. Sometimes, when one has to decide whether or not something is believable, a new perspective might shed a whole new light on it. Tonight, we are going to show you four short stories, some of them real, some of them made up, but all of them quite unusual. Can your deduction reveal which stories are based on real events in Equestria, and which were just pulled out of Robardus' sleeves? At the end of this sketch, we will reveal which is which. A word of advice. What is real and what is wrong is often determined by how we look at it. Our first story takes place in a mythical place far, far away from Ponyville. It has been alluded to more than once in the sketch series, yet up until now remained unseen. This story has Princess Twilight and her faithful assistant Spike the Dragon take a journey to Alabama to find a lost possession. However, they would find that this possession was not the only thing awaiting them there. Whoa. So this is the big prob warehouse I sent you to. Gotta say, I didn't expect it to be quite this big. Just look at all this stuff. Yeah, it's really easy to get lost in here, so you better stick close to me. I think I lost it over there when you zapped me here. Can you now maybe tell me what it actually is we're looking for? Because as of now, I have no fucking clue. Patience, Twilight. I'm positive I'll find it in a cinch. Just give me a minute. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> On the bright side, it's kind of nostalgic to be here. All those references to our old show. Like here, the limbo prop we used in Season 7. Or here, the fake crystal heart. Or... Wow, so here's where it ended up. The old CGI projector used to create Discord's model as well as Prince Blue Blood. A fine piece of technology now unused and forgotten. Kinda sad, but that's the way things go. Did you find it yet? Huzzah! Yes, there it is. Here, under the projector. Mm yeah. <sighs> Finally, back where it belongs. Huh? What the... You don't mean that lovely old sandwich, do you? Is that the reason you dragged me all the way to Alabama? For a fucking toast? There, there, Twilight, of course not for a fucking toast. This isn't just an ordinary sandwich. It's the yummy, delicious, super terrific sandwich. Even if so, that thing's over two years old by now. No way in hell you can still eat that. Oh, Twilight, how often do I need to tell you? Never judge a book by its cover. <coughs> oh. 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 Yep. Yeah. It was bad. Okay, can we then get back now? No, the sandwich might have been bad, but it wasn't even complete. It had a pickle missing. Seriously? But we're not staying here for a fucking pickle. Here yeah, we are. It's gotta be a run here somewhere. I'm not leaving without it. We'll see about that. Ah! Oh, fuck me. Now look what you've done. Me? You did this. Oh, uh, 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 
What? Where am I? Holy shit! Discord? That's right, it's me, Discord, the spirit of chaos. Kneel before me! Uh, no. You do know that there never actually was a spirit of chaos, don't you? Our show just made you up. You're not even real, you're CGI! What? No, that's impossible. You're lying. Behind you, there's literally the projector that made you. Liar, liar, liar! I am real. No, you're not, and you know what? I'm gonna fix this mistake that brought you to life. You see, you feel all better again once you're gone. Fat chance, you are not wiping me out. Hey, the projector! Bring it back! No. Now all of Equestria shall realize just how real Discord is. Huh. <laughs> Whoop. Now we went and unleashed a CGI disco with an existential crisis on Equestria. Good job. Hey, you brought me here in the first place for your fucking sandwich. Could Wadud's magic really have created a real life version of something that used to be nothing but special effects? Were you able to tell whether these events were actually real? Or were those clues you thought you picked up just as unreal as Discord himself? For a second story, we have a notorious teacher from Ponyville suffering a fate worse than death for committing the unthinkable crime of speaking out. Move it, hippie! Your re-education has been rescheduled! You're up next! Re-education, that's what you call this? You fucking monsters, how can you live with yourselves knowing that you support a tyranny? By not thinking about it, simple as that. I am but an instrument of my princess. Whatever she tells me to do, I will do it. And right now, my orders are to get you to treatment room B. Come on now! Don't think I make it easy on you, you fascist bastards! My spirit will never be broken! I'll always fight against your unicorn oppression! Listen, if you don't have anything to say I haven't heard before, I demand you to be silent. Save your lung capacity for when you reveal all your secrets to us. No, I will never be silenced. The righteous fight will go on. Thank God we're here. Doctor, new subject here for procedure. Unicorn, female, mature. Convicted of wrong thinking and rebellion. Fred level S, intensive treatment required. Good, Agent Classified, bring them in. Ah, hello there, my latest subject. Allow me to introduce myself, not that it matters, really. Once we're done, you won't be remembering any of this either way. But etiquette must be adhered to. I am Dr. Science, lead warden of Shining Minds Reformatory Camp, personally assigned by Princess Celestia to oversee our thought correction process. And you are? I am too- Be quiet! You see, it doesn't matter who you are now, because from this day on, you will be exactly what your government expects you to be. <laughs> Go ahead, you madman. Give me your worst shot. I will resist until the bitter end. <sighs> That's what they all say. How trite. I wish one of you would humor me with something interesting from time to time. But then again, what is to be expected of ponies who can't even think right? Agent Classified, please ready her up. Sir. You know, let me go, you monsters! This is ready to duck! On the contrary. It is in our every right to treat you like this. You've been a bad pony. You were breaking the law. But we live in a society. Laws are to be followed, not questioned, not broken. But... But, but what if those laws are wrong? I fight for what's right! Are you really sure? Listen inside and ask yourself. What were you even fighting for? Change? From what? From life in luxury? From a safe and democratic government? An environment where every pony can be who they want to be under the wise and just protection of their princess? Why would you want to change that? You're not against any of those virtues, are you? No, but... but... 
But Celestia is a racist tyrant, and her rule of ponies are being oppressed. Are they? Or are you simply feeling unhappy with your own life? If said oppression were real, how would you have become a teacher? Which itself is a position of power. How would any pony oppressed be able to rise there? I... I... I know what you're trying to do. But I also know what I believe in. I know what's right. What's right is that at this moment you're being held captive for breaking the law. Which makes you a criminal. But you didn't mean to be a criminal, did you? Deep down, you're loving and caring, Pony. With your heart in the right place. I... I... I am. Good, that's good. More ponies should be like you. But all the right intentions don't excuse the wrong behavior. You understand that, don't you? I... do. We know you're not a bad pony. You're a good pony with all the best intentions. Wanting to live a peaceful and fulfilled life, right? Yes. I, I would like that. And you can. Accept that your life can become the peaceful dream you want it to be. Be your best self and let go of those feelings of hate. You want that too within your heart, I know it. The relief of just letting go. Letting go. Yes. There is a way, Miss Chioli. Own up to your mistakes. Spend a few weeks in prison to show penance for your crimes. And when you come out, you'll be a free pony once more. Free to keep Equestria the good place it has always been. Do you want that? Yes. Please, I want to atone. Your wish is my command. Agent Classified, take our friend away, please. She is ready to repent. Yes, I am ready. Take me to prison. I accept my sentence with humility. Very noble of you. All the best, Miss Chilly. Next! Could this really have happened? Could a government conspiracy in Equestria really go so far as to brainwash ponies into completely different beings? Could a character actually be named Dr. Science? Or was Robotus just being crazy again? Our third story is a rather particular one, but nonetheless very tragic. A young scientist trying to achieve betterment for all of pony kind, yet in the process, she destroys herself. Giving way for her deepest, darkest urges to rise to the surface. We do hope that everything was to your satisfaction, madam. Yes, oh yes, very much so. As agreed, we will be sending the new foes over to Nigeria as soon as possible. They should be able to pick up work come next week. Very good. Carry on, sir. As you wish, madam. Madam Rarity? Yes? Wants the heart to see that the Candlelight Elite is ever so eager to help the poor and jobless. Who are... Uh, is that you, Pinky? Even the kids are allowed to share in the gifts. True to your element of generosity. Though perhaps your acts are fueled by a little too much greed to be still considered as generous. How dare you talk to me like that? What do you take me for? Well, Rarity, I know exactly what you are. You're an egotistical, selfish, corrupt, greedy, and evil elitist! <laughs> what the hell's got me to you? Well, where's this music coming from? Why the fuck are you singing? Uh, hello? Are you even still listening to me? You know what, fuck this freak show, I'm out of here. Oh, God! I've never seen you alive! Such a feeling of evil inside! Hey! Such a feeling of evil inside! What are you doing? 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 What
you doing? Don't you? Well, that was quite a reference, wasn't it? But does the amount of effort Robotus went through to make this segment make it any more credible? Or was it just a diversion to mask the fact that he actually just wanted to hop on the Pinkamina Hyde bandwagon almost a decade too late? Which is it? And now to our last story of the day. This one takes place at a location nearly everyone has already been to in their lives. A place of healing and betterment. At least that's what it should be. But every doctor still is equine. And mistakes happen more often than not. Especially at Never Lose Hope Hospital. So, how are we doing on the big day? Everything alright, Sport? Yes. I, I'm a little nervous. Isn't it possible to just keep my tonsils? Maybe they'll be fine again. Look, I know you're scared, but you don't need to be. It'll be a quick procedure, and just after one hour, you'll get to eat as much ice cream as you want. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty good argument, but still, eating ice cream with my tonsils would be even better. I know, kid, but try to think of the positives. They hurt right now, don't they? Pretty badly. Yes. Speaking from experience, if we don't treat it, it'll only get worse. Eventually, you might lose your voice. And you don't want that, do you? You know... I know it's frightening. But be brave, little stallion. It'll be over before you know it. Ah, there's the doctor. We can begin in a few minutes. Doctor? Wait, I thought you were gonna do this. No, I'm just a nurse, not a surgeon. But don't worry, you're in capable hands. Hands? What, what, you don't mean that doctor is... Hello. Nice to meet you, young man. I'm Dr. Wheatley. I'll be leading the procedure today. No, no, not him. Anyone but him. No, that's no way nurse of you, is it? I know I've got a bit of a reputation around Ponyville, but I can assure you I'm in my element here. Everything will be fine. I will do exactly what you're here for. See? No need to be scared. Yeah, there is. He's gonna read the wrong file. That's like all he does. Oh, young ponies in the over-exaggerated fantasies. Don't you worry, little cold. You won't feel a thing. Ready for narcosis, nurse? Ready, doctor. Wait, please. Don't let him do this. At least check on him first. All right, then. Now, here we got the file. Hmm, well, I see. Surgical removal of both four legs due to infection. Hmm, that look fine to me, but what the file says is what the doctor does. Nurse, hand me the bone saw. Uh, I sure I thought this boy was getting his tonsils removed. Well, we can do that too while we're at it. Now the saw, please. That last one was particularly scary, wasn't it? But was it also real? Could really happen that a doctor is so ignorant that we'll just do whatever the patient file says without second guessing? Why would the nurse just accept it and not speak out louder? All these contradictions make it seem pretty obvious what this story is. But does that mean it actually is? Because sometimes things in life don't make sense. Coming up next, we're gonna find out which of tonight's stories were real, and which were in fact wrong. Now it is time to reveal which stories were real and which were not. First up, we have the story of Princess Twilight and her assistant discovering a long-lost technology and waking the CGI spirit of chaos. Does you conclude that since Discord was never before shown in the sketches and had to show up eventually that this story was therefore true? If you did, you were sadly mistaken. Now let's take a look again at the story of a teacher with a strong heart and a lust for freedom who was robbed of both by an evil government. Did you suspect that in our evil and corrupt world something like this wouldn't be out of the question? Then you were right. This exact scene happened off screen in the sketch series between episodes 15 and 18. Next we have the story of Dr. Pinky and Miss Pie, where Pinky was put in the role of Henry Jekyll and made herself a murderous monster, out for revenge on those she deemed deserving of it. If you thought that there was anything to that whole meme, I must disappoint you. Pinky being Jekyll and Hyde never made any sense to begin with. 
After all, Pinky is the farthest from a scientist a pony can be, and that whole schizo thing with Pinkamina has been proven false in the sketches. But it is so like the fandom to just get stuck on one little detail that has the slightest connection to it and then use that as justification for the whole comparison. And lastly, there was the story of a poor young cold who became victim to the unfunny stupid running egg that Dr. Weedley never gets a patient fire right. You're probably thinking that this turn of events was way too tragic and unfair to have happened anywhere else than inside the twisted mind of a sadistic author. Unfortunately, this did actually happen. Therefore, a word of warning. If you ever get sick around Ponyville, go someplace else to see a doctor. Go to Candelot, go to Appaloosa, go to Philadelphia if you must. But do not come to Never Lose Hope Hospital. And if you're already there, then help you God. Once again, we demonstrated the blurry line between right and wrong. So, how did you do tonight? Were you able to see through the fog of fantasy and presumption? Or did the wrong things just seem too real? and the right thing's too wrong to be true. Because sometimes things are simply past possibility. I'm Jameson Flakes. Join us for more stories next time on Past Possibility.